Hey guys, Chad with TheServeInVolleyTennis.com here and this is going to be part two of five awesome tennis practice drills you can do at home. I already made part one. You can click the link in the description below if you want to see part one. However, this is part two. So I'm going to show you five different drills that you can do at home. Sometimes it's raining, sometimes you can't get to a court and it's just great to do these at home or anywhere you can and I'm going to show them to you now. Okay guys, drill number one is gonna be shadow swings. That's where we're just practicing our swing on the forehand and the backhand side. We can do top spin and we can do slice. We can hit low, medium, and high. And we can also work on our slice. And if you're a one-hander, you could do a one-hander, or a two-hander, you could do a two-hander. So I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of swings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get in my ready position, pretend the ball is gonna to come to me. I wanna focus on making that unit turn and swing. Ball's coming to me, go from a semi-open stance, rotate, and swing. Okay, and I could practice some high balls, like I want to protect, practice hitting, I'm hitting the high shot. I can practice the low shot, but a lot of times I just like to isolate one particular thing about the stroke. So let's say it's a follow through with a high elbow, I'm turning to my side, so I might just work on that for 10 reps where I'm hitting and I'm really concentrating on getting a high elbow so I get a nice rotation in my shot. You could work even on a jumping forehand. Something that I've been working on recently with to, to some good success is setting up in that semi-open, open stance and really jumping into the ball. And I noticed it works very well on the slower pace shots. Additionally, on the backhand, if I'm working on my two-hand backhand, I'm gonna change my grip and I'm gonna make a strong unit turn. I'm going to step in, and what I really like to, to focus on, on my two-hander, is this drop in the racket here. So when I bring that racket back, I make that unit turn, I wanna drop that racket so I can hit from under the ball, get that top spin. If I'm working on my one-hander, so let me just show you again. So I turn, hit, okay? Work on getting that leg up, turn, hit, Okay, you could, you could go slow with the swings to try to work it out, or you can swing full speed, doesn't matter. Okay, either way is gonna help. If I'm a one-hander, what I like to do is go from the ready position, visualize the ball's coming to me, I'm gonna change that grip. So I'm gonna get into my, my hammer grip on the backhand. And what I like to do is make a, an early unit turn, getting my racket in this perpendicular position to the ground, making a strong unit turn. You might be able to see my back. And from here, I'm gonna drop the racket into the slot position, and I'm gonna hit the ball. So it's not trying to be a backhand lesson, but I'm just telling you some of the things that I work through. Change the grip, strong unit turn, racket in the correct position away from the body, drop the ball. Now one thing that I really concentrate, that I've been focusing on with my ball machine, which is over there charging, is I'm trying to get this racket dropped a little bit under my hand more to create a little bit more brush and topspin because I noticed I was hitting a little too flat and that might be the case for you. So this is a great way to work it out without going to the court. I could just simply get in my position and really isolate that and get that feeling. You could even stop in this position, make sure you have the right uh, position of the racket to the hand so you're creating brush on the ball. So if I was gonna go through it, I might do something like this. Go really slow, make sure, checking I have all the correct positions, get into my slot position, come from underneath, make contact, extend out. I really believe in this. I really believe in going very slow. Like if you practice this slowly over and over, you start to get a good feeling for it so that you can go a little bit faster and hit a nice shot. So shadow swings are a great thing or drill that you can practice at home or anywhere that you have the space. Just don't hit the coffee table, don't hit the expensive tables, don't hit your camera. <laughs> you can videotape yourself if you want. I also like a slice. So I'll pretend like I'm hitting this way. So a forehand slice, similar to like a drive volley or on the backhand, make sure I have the correct grip, turn, follow through. And there's so many different strokes that you can do. Again, you can, you can try to hit high backhands. You can do 
low back hands. You could even incorporate some movement. If you have some side to side movement, you set up. Me, I'm on these laminate floors with my socks, so I'm sliding. So it's very much like clay, but it uh, doesn't have to be on a slippery surface. So that is drill number one in this video, and I think it's one of the best. Okay, the second drill in this video is the footwork and shadow stroke drills for the overheads. Now, a lot of times when you get to the court, the overheads give you a ton of problems if you're a recreational player, and you, especially if you don't have a great technique. What I often see from players is the ball goes up, first thing they do is they do something like this, where they're wobbling backwards. I was once playing with a guy, he's, he's currently my doubles partner, but I won't mention names, but he's, we're playing on clay and he starts going back like this and he falls and he puts his wrist out, you know, his hand out to brace himself and the thing just cracked and it looked like a Z. So, you know, you, you want to kind of avoid this walking backwards thing and you're going to be kind of like in a split step ready stance position. And the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna to turn to our side, okay? Because that's really the first thing you should do on an overhead, is you wanna to turn to the side. You don't really see too many professional players hitting an overhead like this, although sometimes they're forced into it. If we have the time, the best thing to do, and the proper thing to do, is to turn to the side. Notice my racket goes up right away. I'm not just turning to my side here and then raising my racket. I wanna do both together because that's gonna save me time. So I'm in my continental grip, I'm in the ready position, turn to my side, and notice my hand is still on my racket. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand, point it up, I'm going to bring my racket back a little bit, and from here, probably the best thing to do if you have to go back far is do a crossover step. Okay, so I'll go from the side to show you what the crossover step is. So from the side, overhead's coming to me, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to my side with the racket up. Okay, if you can see my feet, I'm going to separate. I'm going to get the racket back with my hands up. And that's actually the second thing. Third thing you're going to do is you're going to make a crossover step. Okay, so if you're a righty, your left foot will step over your right foot. Okay, when you make the crossover step, don't turn your head. You have to continue looking at the ball. So you continue looking at the ball, make the crossover step. Once you make the crossover step, you shuffle back. Okay, so it's, it's like this, it's like crossover, shuffle, 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 okay? So that's what we wanna practice over and over and over. And this will give you a better overhead, especially on the footwork. So again, if I'm looking at the camera, step one would be to turn, rack it up, move the racket back into position, get the hand up, look up at the ball. I like to get the hand up because it's kind of, it, it will serve a couple of purposes. One is like a range finder to make sure that you're keeping track of where the ball is and it also, it also shield from the sun if the sun is in that position. Okay, crossover, move back, okay? So if you don't have a lot of room, you can just practice that and you know, without having to move back like 30 feet or 20 feet or even 10 feet. So just practice that here, here, okay? And if you could keep practicing this over and over, so turn, separate, crossover. Once you start getting out to the court, it's gonna become more natural, okay? So what, what we're not working on is exactly hitting the overhead in our house, but we are setting up to hit a great overhead by utilizing the proper footwork, getting us to go backward to set up to hit that overhead. And you could stop and you can go through your motion and hit your overhead if you'd like to as well. The third drill in this video is the pivot and rotation drill. And what this is, is a way for you to learn how to transfer your weight into the ball by pivoting or jumping on your feet or off your feet. <laughs> so this really took my game over the top because I see a lot of recreational players, and this used to be myself, where you hit the ball, both feet are on the ground, and really if you see the feet are not moving at all. They're just kind of fixed in the ground. And what happens when we do that is the body doesn't really rotate much, okay? So if we don't rotate much, we're not gonna get much power into the shot. So you might see something like this from a recreational player. Okay, and it just kind of looks like they're frozen after they make contact, nothing much happens. When you watch the pros, you can see that when they strike the ball, 
they're actually pivoting their weight all the way to the side. And what that does, it gets a lot of weight and a lot of momentum into the ball. And that's how they're generating so much pace besides just swinging fast and having proper technique and great timing. It's the same thing on the backhand. So you wanna have good transition into the front foot. So there's different ways to rotate. Let me just go through all of them right now so you know. Okay, for the forehand, we can rotate on the back foot. So it would be a back foot rotation. If you rotate on the back foot, the best thing to do is come off the front foot so you're hitting on the back foot. Now a lot of times I like to use this when I'm on the run. So I'll be on the run out wide and what I do is I base out onto that right foot and when I swing, I let my entire body rotate because I see so many players come out wide and they try to do something like this, which is just awful, which is awful. Or they do something like this and there's no rotation going on. So when we come over to the side, one of the best things you could do to hit, I mean I hit lasers cross court and down the line doing this. People are always like, how do you hit so hard on the run? It's correct technique and pivoting. Now, I know a lot of people out there say my game sucks, but you can't really judge until you see it. And one day I'm gonna have a really good video of me playing maybe a top rated player so you can see. So when I come over, I like to keep the racket up. So I would come over with the racket up here base out on that right foot. I'm gonna come off the ground and I'm gonna pivot around just like so. And, and that's the way you could pivot on the back foot. Additionally, if you're backing up and you wanna get power, you can also practice that. Now, if you just go to the court, like if a coach took you to the court, showed it to you and asked you to do it by actually tossing the ball to you, it would be quite difficult. You would not be very coordinated. Um, it just seemed very awkward, especially if you're so used to keeping both feet down. So this is something that you could practice at home. Once you get the hang of it at home, when you go to the court, it's gonna be a lot easier. So again, you can come out wide and you can really practice on pivoting. Key is to be on the ball of your foot. Let your whole body swing around. Don't worry about that. Let your whole body swing around here. And from here, you can get back into the ready position. Same thing if you're going back. If you're going back, you want to generate power. It's that off that right foot and spin, even off the carpet. <laughs> now, you can also hit off the front foot. I see a lot of people doing that. That's like a more traditional. So you would have your weight on the back foot and you'd step in and pivot on the front foot. Now, mostly this is done in a, from a neutral uh, hitting stance. Okay, so from the open stance, we can't really transfer our weight to the front foot. Semi-open, not as much. But from a neutral stance, you can. So if I'm hitting this way, you can see my feet are almost parallel to each other. And if I'm hitting, I put most of my weight on my back foot and I'm going to pivot onto the front foot. And that's more of, like I said, a classical style. And that's fine, it'll work. It's just that you have to have the time to set up in the neutral stance. In the modern game, because the ball's coming so fast, people don't have time to step to the side and get into the neutral stance. So they're going from the open and semi-open. All right, so that's the forehand side. Let's look at the backhand side. On the backhand side, what I like to really practice is, it's a, it's a little easier actually getting onto the front foot. And that's because from the backhand, I like to try to hit from the little bit of a closed stance or a neutral stance. So for my backhand, I would practice setting up in, into my unit turn, getting my racket up, drop the racket, and I'm gonna make contact on my front foot and I'm gonna bring my back foot, my left foot up. Okay, so it's a little slippery on my laminate floor with my socks, but let me see if I can show you again. So I'm gonna make that turn. Come, right? Let's see on the carpet, without hitting the coffee table. Turn, okay, pivoting on that front foot. Remember, most of your weight should be on the ball of the toe. If you're on the heel, it's gonna be hard to pivot. Okay, so for you two-handed backhanders, that's one that you could do. Another one you could do is on the back foot. So if, the, if you're backing up, if somebody hits a shot and you have to back up, you can pivot off that back foot, okay? So I teach this to my students, I teach it to kids, they get it. You're gonna back up, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna base out on that left foot, if you're a righty, or that back foot. And when you swing, we're gonna rotate the body, and that's gonna give us rotation. Otherwise, it's gonna look something like this. Okay, and not much can happen like this. 
So really allow your body to rotate. I'm just working on that. Now, I'm not gonna go into every single pivot and every single drill. Maybe I'll make a blog post on that in the future. But for now, that's it for the forehand and the backhand. Let me show you two more. For the one-hander, okay, you're gonna get set up in your um, power position and the weight transfer will be from the back foot to the front foot. Okay, I do this very well. For some reason, my backhand is my most natural shot. I, it's my, one of my best shots, but I don't really play with the one-hander as much as the two-hander, although I love the one-hander. <clears throat> so it would look something like this. So I'm on that, totally on that front foot when I make contact with the ball. So if I'm hitting from the side, going to this direction, I make my unit turn, and you can see that I have most of my, right now I have most of my weight on my back foot, and when I go to hit, it's entirely transferred onto the front foot. And that's the way to really generate power is really to, from back to front, if you're in a neutral position, or if you're in the open stance, side to side. So let me show you one more, and that's the jumping forehand, okay? And I, I think I showed that in the first drill, but let me talk about it. So you would set up in your power position. I like to get into a semi-open stance. You could do it from the open stance. And when I go to swing, okay, I can rotate on both. That's another pivot you can do. You can rotate on both feet and practice that, and I would recommend that. And another thing you can do to generate a little bit more power would be to jump up and into the ball. You wanna jump up and a little bit forward. So from the side, it would look something like this. And you can see you get a lot of racket speed and, and you're throwing yourself into, your, into the ball. And when I hit a shot like that, it's pretty powerful. So these are all the different rotations you could do. You do have to be a little bit athletic, but you don't have to get too far off the ground. You don't have to jump like 10 inches in the ground. You just have to jump maybe one or two inches just so your feet are away from the ground when you do that. Again, you could do the same thing on the backhand side like with the two-hander. So you can go from kind of an open stance and swing and get both feet off the ground if you like. Okay, for the one-hander, <laughs> I don't recommend doing it, so I'm not gonna show it. Maybe I will show it. So, you could do something like this, like Federer and just jump around, but uh, that's not really called for, so I'm not gonna go any more into that. Anyway, these are the pivots and these are the drills. That was number three, let's go into number four. All right, drill number four is the five volley type drills. Now, this is gonna seem really easy and you might think it's too easy to do as a drill, but trust me, it works. Especially if you're trying to learn the volley or you're having trouble with volleys, you're just not a great volley player. You're gonna be in your continental position. We're gonna be in the ready position, like we're set up at the net. And we're gonna go through five different volleys, both on the forehand and on the backhand. And those volleys are the block volley, and I wrote a, I made a video on this and I wrote a whole blog post if you wanna see that. I'll go through them really, really quickly here. So the block volley is where we just block the ball. We're not really moving the racket. Then we go through the punch volley where it's like the block volley, except I'm moving the racket forward a bit more and I'm stepping. And then we have the drive volley. And I've had some people tell me that this is not a drive volley. It's just semantics. I call it a drive volley. It's, I distinguish it from the swinging volley. You might be thinking of a swinging volley. But this is my idea of a drive volley. It's like the block volley, but we're bringing the racket a little bit further back. We have more time to hit the ball. And we're stepping in and finishing a little bit more into the court. Okay, so from the side, on the forehand, the block volley would just be blocking the ball. Try not to keep a very tight grip on the hand because the ball will fly off if it's a 80, 90 mile an hour shot. On the punch volley, we're gonna, it's gonna be like the block volley, except we're going to move the racket forward and down a little bit and step in a little bit, okay? You can, there's two variations of the punch volley. We can just move the racket forward or we can move the racket forward and step in at the same time. Okay, so it was the block, we had the punch. Let's talk about the drive. Drive, we can bring the racket back a little bit more, still in front of our shoulder, not in back of our shoulder. We never wanna bring the racket in back of our shoulder on the volley because that's just gonna to take too much time. So, ball's coming in slow. I'm gonna bring the racket back up here, my hand, right? So, maybe by the shoulder we'll be stretching it, but I like to keep it a little bit in front. 
and then we're going to move the rack in front, step in, and we're going to follow through a little bit more. We're going to follow through a little bit more. Maybe here would be the drive volley, here would be the punch volley, and the block volley just stays where it is. Okay, so there's three volley types. The fourth one would be the half volley. So for the half volley, you really want to bend down low because most of those half volleys are going to be low. So it's just practicing low. It's like, almost like a lunge, getting low. And the fifth one would be a drop volley. The drop volley is where we open the face and we just have to be very delicate on the hands and allow the ball to just come off. So boom, comes right off, right? So the way I do this is I, I practice the block volley. I think I visualize the ball coming to me and I just visualize hitting the ball like this. So in different spots, right? It doesn't always have to be here. Sometimes you can visualize the block volley here. You can visualize the block volley here. And I'm just visualizing hitting the ball, okay? And when I do this, I want to keep a, a loose grip. I don't want to go too tight. The next thing I would do is I would go through the punch volley. I would do the drive volley. I would do all of them. So the drive volley, then I would practice the half volley, get back into the ready position, and then maybe a drop volley. And then do the same thing on the backhand side. On the backhand side, it's really important to turn the shoulders. On the forehand side, as you can see, I don't have to turn the shoulders much. On the backhand side, if I just go like this, it's not very strong. But if I turn my shoulders, now it's a lot stronger. So when we hit a forehand volley, we're hitting it a little bit more in front of us. When we're hitting the backhand volley, it's a little bit more onto the side of us. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So here's my, here you see me from the side. And if I'm hitting the forehand volley, I'm usually hitting it out in front of me. The backhand volley, as I turn my shoulders, let's pretend I'm hitting this way, you can see is more on the side of me because I'm turning my shoulders. All right, so I would go through the five different volleys on the backhand side. So you would have the block volley, again, loose grip. You would have a punch volley where we're going to move the racket a little bit more, maybe step in. A drive volley where we can bring the racket back more, step in more. We're going to have the half volley. And when you do the half volley, remember the face needs to be open just a little bit more. There's so, so many little nuances involved in the volley. All I can say is just keep practicing the volley because the more you practice it, the more instinctual it becomes. Because if we don't open the face on the half volley, what happens is it's going to go into the net. So it's just something that I do instinctually. When a half volley comes, I need to open the face a little bit more. And I'm just practicing getting down. And a lot of times it's almost like a block volley. I don't have to punch the ball, I just have to block it because the ball's already coming in with some pace. Then the fifth one would be the drop volley. So the drop volley, we open up the face, we cut the ball. So just a nice little motion like this. Just like that, okay? And just go out through and practice them. Visualize yourself. Hit it going. You can go through different combinations. So I can put them at the net. I have a block volley. Then I turn, have a little bit more of a punch volley. And then I have a half volley on the forehand side. Maybe even throw in the, uh, the volley head drill that we did. Oh, excuse me, the overhead drill that we did. Hit the ball, come back in, block volley. Drive volley, keep practicing that. Maybe move side to side, add some movement. Trust me, it works. And uh, don't discount that. You know, try, try these out for yourself before you discount them. All right, now we've been through four. I wanna go into the fifth one. All right, the fifth drill involves the serve master. I've talked about this very handy dandy tennis teaching serving device before. It's made by Lisa Dodson. I'll put the description and the link below. I've made an entire uh, video and post on this if you want to know how to use it. I'm going to show you a little bit how to do that today. And what we're going to do, you can do this if you have a sock and some tennis balls. You don't always need the serve master, although it is the best instrument to use to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through my serve motion using the serve master so I can practice it at home. If you don't have anything, you can also use your racket and you could just use your hand too. And then what, the way I started is here, I'm not going to go through all the details of how to do it because I already made a video. And I'm just going to practice my serve. Now just be careful, I have high ceilings, but just be careful you don't hit something up there if you're using the serve master. Make sure you have enough room all around to use it. So let's see that again. Typically you're going to start here. I'm going to pretend like I have my racket in my hand. Toss, swing, okay? 
Let's see if I can get it going towards the camera. Toss, swing. Okay, I'm being a little careful in here. You know, I've got some expensive stuff around, but generally you could do this outside. You don't even need to do it inside. You can really do it on your in the backyard. Or you can do it on the patio. You can do it on the front lawn. Now you could even do it in a subway. No, don't do it in a subway. Okay, so back, over. Okay, so I'm just practicing my form. What I could do is isolate different components. Maybe I want to practice keeping the hand up a little longer. Maybe I want to practice the racket drop pronating. Maybe I want to come through with the right, with the right leg. I talk about that in one of the serve videos I made recently. Maybe I want to practice coming in with the front leg like the professionals do. So I'm going to come through and I'm going to jump. And that's something that, you know, I've practiced for sure because, you know, I see how the pros, the right-handed pros jump onto the left foot and it's, again, not so much a consequence that they're just trying to jump on the left foot, but it's a consequence of going through their serve motion and it's their upward momentum that's going up, that's causing them to land on their front foot. So when I practice my serve motion, I practice landing here. And it's also good if you just want to do continue, you could just continue to go through the motion here and this teaches the good serve motion with the racket drop and the elbow up and I teach this to the kids and you know there's nobody that I've ever taught that hasn't been able to do this at first you know they may be confused as to how to do it but I take them I guide them step by step and after a while once they get it which only takes maybe a few minutes then they're always going to get it it's like riding a bike you just get right back on so that is something that you can do to practice your serve. Now I'm gonna give you a bonus drill that you can do next. All right, this is the bonus drill. For those people that have the Topspin Pro or those people that would like to have the Topspin Pro, it's a great way to learn topspin or to improve your topspin at home. And if you don't have one of these, you can still practice. It's just that it's a little bit more effective using the, the Topspin Pro. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to try to create brushing on that ball. And I've also made a video on this as well, and I've written a blog post, so if you want to see those, I'll put those in the description. But I can sit here, especially if I'm new at tennis, like if I'm new and I can't really hit with topspin, or I or haven't been able to really do it on the court, I get instant feedback because the ball tells me if it's spinning forward or not. I can see if it's spinning forward. If it's not spinning forward, I'm not doing the technique correctly, and I would need to get under the ball. The way to create topspin is come from under the ball and brush. So topspin is a, is a uh, not just a necessity, but it's essential in today's modern game. Now here we can see the ball is rotating forward because I'm using the correct technique with the correct grip. And the topspin pro really helps because this screen is at about a 78 degree angle to the floor. So if I align my racket face to the mesh screen and just come from underneath, I'm gonna be creating that topspin. And I could do the same thing on the backhand side. I could do it with the two-hander, and I could do it with the one-hander as well. I really need to actually practice with the one-hander. This is really good for me. Now, what I would suggest with the Topspin Pro is using it for about five minutes a day. It does adjust, by the way. Uh, I, would, I would recommend using it about five minutes in the morning. Maybe you could do it five minutes in the evening. You can do it while you're listening to music, you can do it while you're watching TV, but it really gets you into the habit of hit, coming under the ball and hitting with topspin. And again, you could adjust this. So if I wanted to raise it up. Okay, so I've just raised the topspin pro. So if I want to generate topspin up here, I can do that too. So I just got to brush on the ball and I'm still creating that topspin even though the ball is higher. So that's the way I can create top spin at different levels. I can hit it low, I can hit it high, I can even raise it higher than this. All right, well, that's the Top Spin Pro. That was the bonus drill. And I hope you really got some value from all of the drills that you can do here. And I'm gonna send it back to you, Chad, for the end of the video. Well guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you can go and practice these drills in your home or wherever you can. They really will improve your game when you get on the court. If you like the video, please give me a like. If you're new to the channel or haven't subscribed, please do so. And remember, I have a blog. It's called serveandvolleytennis.com. 
And I wrote an entire blog post on the 10 awesome practice drills you can do at home. So if you want to see all 10 with details, I'll put the link below and you can check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.